welcome to the Pelican Brief with your host, David Tapman. Welcome to the Pelican Brief. I am your host, David Tatman. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today we talk about what happened during week eight of the 2024 regular session of the Louisiana legislature and what to expect in week nine. The legislative bodies continue to work very quickly during this session. However, week eight was uh, kind of an abbreviated schedule. The House and Senate worked only three days, Monday through Wednesday. There was no real reason given for this, but I expect it had to do with the fact that the Rolling Stones were playing at Jazz Fest on Thursday, and the legislators would rather be at that concert than uh, be stuck in the Capitol. So, and uh, I, I, uh, I will tell you, I went to the Stones concert, and it was definitely w- worth taking a day off. I'm glad they were off so that I could go. It was quite a show. Uh, in fact, uh, Mick Jagger even uh, uh, talked about our governor, Jeff Landry, but you can read that in the paper. So um, they still did a good bit of work uh, during uh, the week. The, the committee schedules were really uh, packed, uh, and they worked late each night to try to uh, clear their calendars. I will tell you that I've noticed that both the House and Senate floor calendars are filling up. So uh, we could be in for some uh, long days and long nights uh, in the next few weeks of the session. So about four and a half weeks left. um, And uh, there's going to be a lot of action in that time. What's going to be some of that action? Well, let's talk about the Constitutional Convention. We talked about it last week. CC 24 is what we're calling it on this show. Uh, as we mentioned, the proposed constitutional convention, uh, you know, continues to be the subject of speculation. Many insiders are saying that it won't happen. Uh, HB 800 by Representative Bo Boye has have been heard in, in the committee and is currently scheduled for a full debate on the House floor on Tuesday, May 7th. Uh, there have been some amendments as the bill currently stands uh, the Constitution, uh, the Constitutional Convention, CC24, would still begin uh, at 5.30 p.m. on Monday, May 20th, 2024. There would be uh, 171 delegates. That has remained consistent. Um, it requ- the, 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 the new version of the bill would have it end um, on June 3rd. Um, so that the submission of a proposed constitutional convention would be no later than June 3rd. However, there's a provision in the current form of the bill, not the original bill, but would allow the constitutional convention delegates to extend that uh, to July 15th, which was the original uh, date for submission of the constitution in the original bill. And then, of course, uh, the the idea, uh, the governor was on recently on a podcast the idea is that the, he would like to see the Constitution voted on at a high turnout election, and that would be the fall election, uh, fall presidential election. And so that's kind of his reasoning for wanting to do it now. Um, and it does make sense that if you were going to do that, you would want it to be in a uh, uh, an election where voter turnout is going to be really high and not like in some special election. So... Um, the biggest issues that changed uh, on the, um, in the bill this week are the timeline for CC24, as I mentioned. There are some other significant changes, and that is that the Constitutional Convention would not touch um, Articles 1 through 4 of the Constitution. Article 1 is the, the rights uh, portion of it, things like property rights, and then the 2, 3, and 4 deal with the legislative uh, branch of government, executive branch of government, and then government processes and how all that works. Um, there's also M- the uh, Minimum Foundation Program, which funds K-12 through education in Louisiana, has been uh, uh, taken off the table as well as uh, the homestead exemption. And so the bill as it stands now uh, has the tricameral format where the House and the Senate and the gu- gubernatorial uh, delegates are all separate bodies uh, for the purpose of the convention. 
Uh, and uh, also there would be, uh, there's been a provision put in there that would not allow for any private funding of CC24 uh, that was in the original bill. So just in time for this big vote um, on the House floor on uh, Tuesday, um, a poll by Fauché Strategies, uh, this is uh, Ron Fauché's group out of uh, uh, Washington, D.C., shows that only 1% of uh, Louisiana uh, voters polled thought the Constitutional Convention should be a priority or one of the governor's top priorities. And while Governor Landry remains really popular overall, the polling for CC24 is uh, not an issue that resonates with Louisiana voters, uh, and at least in this poll, good poll, big sample size, very reputable firm. So this is not, this is a nonpartisan uh, um, organization that did this poll. And the focus wasn't on the Constitutional Convention, but it was really to find out which issues were biggest uh, and most important to Louisiana voters. And just by the way, uh, while the Constitutional Convention was at um, 1% uh, crime was at 29%. And of course, there were different breakdowns. But And you can look at that poll. Uh, you can g go online. You can look at it in Fauché Strategies. You can also go to places like The Advocate where they have uh, listed that poll. And and so just take a look at it. Uh, uh, you know, this is going to be a big issue. You know, it was always thought that the Constitutional Convention process and progress through the through the through the process was going to hang up in the Senate. I do believe that there is enough pushback to where it perhaps may struggle on the House floor. Remember, it needs a two-thirds vote in order to pass. That would be 70 votes uh, in uh, the legislature. So uh, we'll see. And the, the Democrats and the caucus have already lined up uh, strongly against it. They would have to get almost every Republican vote uh, and there have been some Republicans who have s suggested that they do not support it. So it'll be a close vote on the House floor. My guess is if they don't have the votes, they won't bring it up. But but we'll see. Um, so that's the Constitutional Convention. Keep an eye on it. We're going to keep reporting on it as long as it's alive because it's a big deal. And uh, um, see where we go. Um, so let's talk about some other big issues that have been moving uh, through the process. Consumable hemp. Um, what is consumable hemp? Well, you know, hemp is a cousin of the cannabis plant. Maybe it's like a sister-in-law. In Louisiana, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, I'm sorry. I digress. Um, hemp is, is usually, uh, you know, it's a plant that, uh, while it is uh, in the family of the cannabis plant, it does not usually have the same potency that a cannabis plant would have. And Back in 2000, I think it was the 2018 Farm Bill, uh, Congress descheduled hemp. So hemp and cannabis were on the same level as a Schedule I um, narcotic federally. But uh, the Farm Bill um, uh, descheduled hemp. And so farmers wanting to grow this as another crop, another pot potential cash crop for them, uh, the Congress uh, descheduled this particular item, hemp. And hemp has a lot of applications. It can be used, I mean, originally, you know, the old term smoking rope was uh, hemp. And uh, the reality of it is you can make ropes with it. The hemp fibers are used, and they, they even make plastics uh, with hemp. And there's a lot of applications. Uh, and really, in the big picture, the one that ended up coming out and being the biggest cash crop is not one of those, but but they the idea was to allow farmers to grow hemp, and so they have been. In Louisiana in 2019, we passed some pretty significant legislation that also provided for the sale and distribution of hemp products. A lot of this was pushed by uh, those who uh, use CBD products, cannabinoids, um, you know, it's kind of a, supposedly a, a, a wonder drug. It, it, it eliminates uh, uh, inflammation. It can be helped in treating depression and all kinds of things. But, you know, when this all started, uh, th these products weren't even allowed on the shelf. Today, there are over 1,500 licensed sellers of hemp. 
in Louisiana. This is not just these hemp stores that you see all around or these CBD stores. These in, you know, those boutiques are still up and running, and there's lots of those, but Rouse's supermarkets and most convenience stores now sell these products. So um, consumable hemp, when it was first passed in 2019, so in 2020, we had a look at what the, uh, the revenue from those products were. It was about $500,000. And uh, in, um, in 2023, it had risen to $33 million in sales. So clearly it has exploded in growth. And I would expect the 2024 numbers to show significant increase in, increase uh, as, w- as well. So the laws were passed beginning in 2019 that would allow for those products like THC-infused seltzers, gummies, extracts. Uh, there were other bills that were passed along the way that opened the door for these products and other products like Delta-8 and Delta-9. So I don't take CBD products or uh, hemp products. I've not taken Delta-8 or Delta-9, but I am told that they give you a similar buzz to cannabis or marijuana, which is the slang term for it. So uh, keeping, you know, these are, these are products that are now on the shelf. And so there are a couple of bills that uh, address these products directly because I think it, the cat kind of got out of the bag a little bit on it because we don't have recreational marijuana. Although I would tell you if you, it's very easy to get a, I don't have one, but uh, it's very easy to get a medical marijuana card and to get uh, medical marijuana. It's not, it's not a big hurdle. Uh, And so if you want to go through the trouble, you can get it. So um, there are a couple of bills that deal with the hemp portion of this and the CBD portion. And that uh, one of them we, we mentioned in last week's show, which is Senate Bill 237 by Senator Thomas Presley from Shreveport. It would eliminate consumable hemp in Louisiana. So it would get rid of that entire industry and those products would be off the shelf in places like Rouse's and convenience stores. Um, the legislation stems from concerns for those who believe that the hemp industry basically is legalized uh, cannabis or marijuana. It's the THC that is the psychoactive ingredient in both marijuana and in hemp that this goes seeks to sort of uh, get rid of. Um, it, uh, it has been referred to the House Criminal Justice Committee, which is interesting because usually these bills have been heard in the Agriculture Committee, uh, but that's where it is, and we'll get that bill scheduled soon and see what it has to say. There's another bill moving through the process. That is House Bill 952 by Representative Dustin Miller of Opelousas. Dustin's uh bill is more of a slow approach. It, it places some restrictions on the industry, things like maximum dosages. Uh, it would change the packaging, uh, but it would not be a complete ban. Uh, that bill will actually be debated in the Senate agriculture committee. Um, so keep an eye on, um, on those bills, uh, Right now, uh, Dustin Miller's bill, I believe, limits the THC content of a pro- the product to be less than uh, 8 milligrams or less. And to give you an example, while it is cannabis in Colorado, uh, Colorado re- requires dosaging on, um, on THC, and uh, it limits it to 10 milligrams per dose. So it will just, we'll just have to see how that goes. But keep an eye. It could be an interesting conversation. Um, we talked about last week a bill about protesting. And so we're going to continue to keep an eye on House Bill 173 by Representative Brian Fontenot of Thibodeau. It would create the crime of approaching a police officer uh, when lawfully engaged in law enforcement duties. The bill also would expand penalties for those individuals who block public streets, come within 25 uh, feet of a police officer in those circumstances. It would also prohibit picketing at private residence. Uh, So this is a very similar bill. It was passed in the legislature last year, but was vetoed by then Governor John Bell Edwards. This is particularly timely because we've seen a lot of the protests around uh, the, the, um, the Israeli war 
uh, uh, Palestinian, pro-Palestinian protesters at Tulane University and LSU and other universities across the state and at the state capitol. Um, and uh, m- some of those have been become pretty significant. So this, this law would affect how police can handle those particular situations. And I know everybody's got a keen eye on, on those protests. So uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, it's very timely. So we talked also uh, last week about public records. Uh, we talked about uh, Senate Bill 582 by Senator Heather Cloud of Turkey Creek, which provides for uh, records relative to governmental functions. There uh, are several bills on the subject matter, but it appears that this is the bill, and it is the uh, the press is uh, apoplectic over this. I mean, there, th- last week I said they were having kittens, and I had a couple of reporters call and give me a little grief about it, which is fine. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I- I'm, I'm kind of like the Sean Payton uh, mantra, do your jobs, go out and do the work, you'll find the story. Uh, but now, instead of having kittens, I'm going to say they're having seizures. Let's see how many calls and, and reports I get on that. Um, if you read the articles or watch the news channels, uh, you know how left-leaning everything is. They don't report it. They take a position and promote that position. It's actually advocacy. It is not press. Therefore, I don't think it should have the same positions and same freedoms that, uh, that the true press of you know, when I was a child was around. Uh, I'm not sure if I even like this bill, but I can tell you that Public records requests are often used to harass uh, elected and appointed officials at the cost of taxpayers in Louisiana. Millions of dollars uh, in state revenues and local uh, revenues are used to address these issues. Um, I'm all for the public access to the information, but the truth is you can get most of this online if you want to. Think Louisiana Checkbook. Think about all of the local governments who have um, engaged that whole uh, putting public records online. Uh, those are great, but this is, this is um, look, it was weaponized against me in my time in the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board. We had to hire a full-time employee dedicated to those requests for the few individuals that made all of these requests. One of them made 450 requests in a year. I mean, what do you, what do, you do? That's more days than there are in a year. And it never amounted to anything. There was nothing that ever came from those public records requests. It, you know, just don't believe what you read, um, because I would I would tell you, I was harassed through public records requests personally when I ran for my third and final term on the East Baton Rouge Power School Board. The request came from a company in California with no tie to Louisiana. Obviously, somebody in Louisiana hired them and wanted to hide behind that public records request. Um, it 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 you know they wanted my they wanted all my emails and communications as a school board member, which they have a right to get. Now, some of those, some of those emails may have dealt with, say, a personnel matter or a uh, medical matter. That would not be uh, uh, appropriate for public records requests. So we had to go through every, we couldn't just give them our emails. We had to go through and make sure we weren't violating any other laws. And there were hundreds of emails that were removed from that public records request because they discussed a personnel matter or a discussion with personnel about things that were covered, the health of a student, you know, medical issues that, uh, you know, are currently covered by uh, um, uh, federal law, which you, we were not able to discuss, so students in specific names. So we had to redact things on those. And so we sent over thousands of documents to this company in California, and nothing came of it. So just remember, most public records requests are available. I, I mean, most public records are available online. You can still uh, ask for a public records request. But another thing this bill does that I think is really important is you ought to produce an ID. Whoever wants that public records request ought to say what it's for, and they ought to say who they are when they ask for it. Of course, they can hire a company out of California to do it if you have resources, but I just, you know, you still could get to records. You just have to get those records where you think something's going on. You can get a court order. So reporters need to do their jobs and stop whining. It is not becoming of those those very talented members of the press who are my friend. So we'll now move to insurance. So the big news on the insurance reform front is that the Senate judiciary has stalled efforts to address high auto insurance rates 
in Louisiana. Most of the bills that were filed were to bring Louisiana in line with what other states were doing, to, to, to prevent us from being outliers. Several of, the, several of the bills were, quote, unquote, voluntarily deferred, and others were amended and watered down so much that I don't think they're worth the paper that they're written on, and those bills were passed out of committee. We don't know exactly what's going to happen in those bills. My guess is there's going to be efforts to strip those bills that watered, uh, those amendments that watered the bills down, uh, on the floor, but we shall see. So the other bills that were voluntarily deferred are likely dead for the session. Don't expect y- any noticeable changes in audible, automobile insurance rates to drop any time soon or, frankly, ever. This was a pretty big hit to the Louisiana Association of Big Business and Industry, or w- as we refer to them, LABI. They took the lead on the effort to make Louisiana liability laws like most other states. Um, Lobby is seen as one of the most powerful groups in in Louisiana and at the state capitol. Um, And so this is something we'll continue to watch, but it does look like uh, many of those uh, bills are dead. So there is better news on the property insurance front, so your homeowner's insurance and your business insurance and things of that sort. Uh, Commissioner Tim Temple's package designed to make Louisiana more in line with other states from a property perspective and less of an outlier on that property insurance is moving through the process. Most of the legislation in the property um, insurance package simply amends laws in Louisiana to, to kind of take us from being outliers to being more mainstream. Um, you know, we continue to hear stories about families that are, are losing their homes because they can't afford the insurance. Others are going without coverage or dramatically reduced coverage. This, this package put forth by Commissioner Temple is going to move the needle. Now, how quickly that needle moves, we don't know. Um, we know that there are insurance coverage issues worldwide. Uh, across the country, and uh, and particularly in Louisiana, hopefully we will uh, we will be able to see some some relief from that. Another issue that uh, has popped up that we haven't talked about is vaping. So vapor products uh, have been a major issue in our state. Uh, they're a major issue with young people getting access to them, and you know there are a lot of people who believe that uh, vaping is uh, you know a harm reduction strategy so better than smoking a cigarette that is combusting as you draw the smoke in your lungs uh, vaping is fluids and and um, they contain usually nicotine although they can contain other things um, and um, so there was a bill passed last year that's now being litigated that would dramatically limit vapor products to those that are either approved by the FDA or awaiting a final judgment on litigation. So House Bill 621 by Representative Joe Stagney would uh, prevent the. It, it goes a little further from the bill last year. It 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 it, it reinstates the, the the bill last year that is currently being litigated, and it add some provisions that outlaws direct shipping of vapor products from foreign nations and those individuals who are not approved. And so that really tightens up the vaping uh, space. However, another uh, product is, uh, is raised its head, and that is synthetic nicotine. So this has become a pretty big fight at the session. Um, so what is synthetic nicotine? It is nicotine that is not derived from tobacco. So there are some, uh, some synthetic nicotine products that aren't made. They're made in a lab. And I don't know if anyone knows what the formula is, just like we don't know what the formula is for cigarette tobacco. But for the most part, it's created in labs. It is, it is used in vapor products. But more recently, it is used in these pouches that are usually... Um, sold in in, um, in in how strong they are. So you can get a one milligram pouch, uh, and, and you put it in your mouth, just like you would put in like a uh, uh, you know a dip or a moist snuff uh, product like Skoll or Copenhagen. I think Skoll has little pouches. I think Copenhagen does too. But this this is not tobacco. This is nicotine. So it's straight nicotine. You put it up, as as uh, they used to say. You put a pinch between your cheek and gums. For those of you who are older, old enough to remember that, 
Uh, this is uh, not tobacco based. So products like On, uh, Juice Head, Velo, and others, uh, these are the products that are, are, are being discussed and debated. Now, the FDA has banned these products uh, um, uh, completely. However, Louisiana is poised to pass a bill to make them legal in Louisiana. They would still be federally illegal, but House Bill 970 by Representative Bo Boyer, again from New Iberia, same guy's got the Constitutional Convention, really good, strong legislator, good man, has a bill to, to do just that, to make those products uh, legal in Louisiana. So keep an eye on this one. This one will be one to watch um, because there are a lot of products in that space that are like juicy fruit and things like that that seem more aimed at children than at uh, 60-year-old men like me. So keep an eye on this one. We'll watch it as it goes through the product. That, that bill has passed the House and is now in the Senate and uh, while the while it's pending Senate referral, I'm, uh, my understanding is they're going to suspend the rules and hear it the next day. So there won't be a lot of time for public input. If you're interested in it, you can watch it. We'll likely be in committee on Tuesday of this week. So that is our show for uh, today. We thank our listeners. Uh, I, I, I love when I'm out uh, at dinner or at a party and somebody comes up and says, hey, I love your podcast. I would love it more if they would... Uh, would uh, get involved in uh, social media, comment. It helps build our audience, like it, share it with your friends, uh, subscribe. Uh, the, the podcast is doing very well. Again, we do not uh, monetize this. I do this at my own expense to communicate with my clients and with the general public. Uh, and we want to continue to do that. So uh, you can find us on all of uh, the podcasting platforms, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, you name it, we're on it. You can find us on all social media platforms, places like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever it's called now, and the handle on the social media platforms is at pelicanbrief225. You can watch us on YouTube if you can bear it, if you can bear looking at my face. That handle is a little different. It's at the Pelican Brief 225. You can also find us um, on the web, www.pelicanbriefpodcast.com. And you can also email me, david at pelicanbriefpodcast.com. And I would be happy to uh, uh, interact with you. I would love to hear your take on what we're talking about, good, bad, or otherwise. If you could take a moment and go rate us on Spotify, on um, Apple, on any of those platforms, we would really, really appreciate it. Even if you don't like us, go on and rate us. We just want to be rated. And uh, so we're uh, enjoying doing this podcast. There's a lot of good information coming. We enjoy the comments. Thank you so much for all of our faithful listeners, a uh, couple of shouts out to legislators who are faithful listeners. Sometimes they don't agree uh, with maybe my lean on things, but it's always a very cordial and informed uh, conversation. So thank you so much for tuning in. And until next week, we are the Pelican Brief. Pelican Brief is an off-script production.